Okay, this is going to be part five of the video series on the convergence of sequences. And in this video, uh, we'll look at something called the squeeze theorem. <clears throat> it's just something that you've had before. Some people call it the squeeze theorem. Uh, some people call it the sandwich theorem. But you've seen it way back when, when you were working with the limits of uh, functions. So let's take a quick look and see what the squeeze theorem looks like as it's applied to sequences. Now to start with, it looks like this. Uh, definition, it gives you this and says you've got three sequences. You've got an A sequence, less than a C sequence is less than a B sequence. And if you find the limit of the first two sequences is equal to some number L, then you can show that the limit of the sequence that you're interested in is also L. Now, what does all this stuff mean? <clears throat> and let's kind of do it graphically over here and give you an idea of what the, the thing looks like. So first of all, it does this, is uh, I'm going to go ahead, and you're beginning with the C sequence. So whatever the problem is, uh, this sequence right here, this is your original sequence. So we'll go ahead and put that on. So this is the one that you're given in the problem. So what you want to do is to show that the this C sequence, whatever it is, uh, if you take the limit as you go way off to infinity, if it approaches some fixed number, then you can show that this sequence converges. So the question is, does this sequence converge or not? Now to do that, let's go ahead and put a couple points up here and just to give you an example. Uh, it might look something like this. So let's just say that we had <clears throat> a sequence and it does this. So the points start here. Um, they kind of bounce around a little bit. But in general, they seem to be coming down and leveling off at this red line. We'll go ahead and put a line in here where we can see it. <clears throat> so these blue dots, this sequence, seems to be approaching this red line. And what that red line would be, that's going to be uh, the limit. So that's going to be L, this thing that is approaching. So if you just look at this, graphically, it seems as though the sequence does converge and it approaches L. In this case, L would be equal to 1 specifically for our problem. But now the problem, it says, <clears throat> is to show uh, algebraically that it converges, we'll actually use something called the squeeze theorem. And it's based on this. If you want to show that the blue sequence converges, if you can find a green sequence, an A sequence that stays below it, and a B sequence that stays above it, and these two sequences both approach the same fixed number, then since your sequence has to stay in between those two sequences, that your sequence must also approach L. So again, graphically what this looks like, first of all, let's do this. Let's find an A sequence that stays below it. And if you did this, it might look something like this. So here is an A sequence, this series of green dots right here. Now, the A sequence is always less than the C, your original sequence, so the green dots are always below the blue dots. Then you try to find a sequence that stays above it. So let's call it a B sequence. Let's go ahead and put that on there. So if you can find a B sequence, that might be this series of black dots right here, and the black dots always stay above the blue dots. So the B sequence is greater than the C sequence. Now the idea is, let's go ahead and turn off the blue dot. Here's your, your original sequence is the blue dots. <clears throat> if we turn those off, <clears throat> then you can kind of see what we mean by the squeeze theorem. So the idea is, looking at this, you can see the, the limit of the A sequence, the A sequence seems to be approaching L. So over here, the limit of the A sequence seems to be approaching L. Now look at the B sequence. The black dots also seem to be approaching L, so the limit of the upper sequence is also L. And the way it works, if the limit of the lower sequence is approaching L and the limit of the upper sequence is approaching L, then these two have to be approaching each other. And since your sequence is trapped in between, and we'll go ahead and put those back on now, so your blue sequence is trapped in between, the, you, the limit of your blue sequence must also be approaching L. So that's what the thing's going to look like. And it actually consists kind of of three steps. First step is to show that the limit of the lower sequence is L, Second step, show that the limit of the upper sequence is L. <clears throat> and then finally in the third step, if those two approach the same number, then your sequence has to approach L and it will converge. And it won't take you long to figure out on these kind of problems, the trick is this, is you're given this original one. Let's put a little box around this thing. You are given this original sequence. So you need to find a sequence that stays below it and a sequence that stays above it. And again, it will not take you too long to figure out that Finding out what these two sequences is, that's the difficult part of the problem. Solving it's actually not very hard. But you need to just be able to come up with a lower sequence and an upper sequence given your original sequence. So that's what it looks like. So now with all of that, let's go ahead and look at a problem and see how it works. And actually you'll see these things are really not that hard to figure out. So suppose we have something that looks like this. 
So I'm going to come down, and what I've got is a sequence. A sub n is equal to cosine of n divided by n. And I want to know, does this sequence converge? And if it converges, what does it converge to? Well, just like all the other videos, let's go ahead and plot some points to start with. So if I replot the points, this is what this thing looks like. It starts here, and just looking at it, it looks as though these blue dots are centering in, sort of settling in on the x-axis. So we'll go ahead and put that line in there. And this is going to be um, the limit. So it seems to be approaching this limit, and it seems to be zero. So it looks like if you go way off to infinity, the blue dots seem to be approaching a limit of zero. So that's, graphically, that's what it looks like. But you'll have to be able to show this. So the idea is this. You want to start with uh, <laughs> trying to find what happens to this thing as n goes off to infinity. Now the trouble with the cosine is this. It oscillates uh, between 1 and 0. And let's go ahead and just make a quick sketch of that. So suppose I had something that looks like this, and we'll go over and put a bar about right here. <laughs> Now, if you remember what a cosine graph looks like, it comes through here at plus 1. Then it goes down, uh, comes back up again, goes back down, comes back up. And the lowest it ever goes is a negative 1. The highest it ever goes is a positive 1. So a cosine graph is trapped somewhere in between minus 1 and positive 1. And you can use this to kind of help you uh, find the lower and upper limits. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to start with the cosine and I'm going to put it in terms of x, just like we've done with all our other ones, to make it uh, model a function. And what you're saying is that the cosine has to be less than or equal to 1. <clears throat> but it also has to be greater than or equal to a negative 1. So the numerator of this sequence bounces back and forth between a negative 1 and a positive 1. <clears throat> But what you've got is the cosine of n divided by n. So now that you've got an upper and a lower limit for the cosine, uh, you can take each one of these and divide them by x. So I'll divide this one by x. And if I divide this one by x, that gives me my original sequence. And then whatever you do to one part, you do to the other part. So what happens is here is your original sequence. And you have found an upper one, so I think I'll kind of do them in green here, uh, as we did before. Uh, this would be a sub n. Um, so a sub n is this one right here. Then I think we used black before. This is going to be b sub n. This will be the upper sequence. That's going to be this one right here. And the one in the middle is your original sequence. So now you've got an upper and lower bound. So now you're ready to prove this thing. Now to prove it, let's go back and look at the definition. <laughs> to prove it, you actually need uh, three steps here. The first step is to show that uh, the limit of a sub n, uh, the limit of the lower sequence, approaches l. So step number one, show that the limit of a sub n approaches l. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so th we'll put this right over here. We'll call it uh, step one. So step one you want to find the limit of a sub n as n, actually we'll call it a sub x, since we're putting in the terms a sub x as x approaches infinity. And it's going to be equal to the limit of negative 1 over x as x approaches infinity. Now what this thing does is x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This entire term goes to 0. So what that is, that is going to be the limit of uh, a sub n. So the limit of a sub n is equal to 0 as n approaches infinity. Okay, second step. Now let's go back up here again. Um, second step, now you need to show that the limit of the B sequence is approaching, the, hopefully approaching the same thing. Now, if they approach something different, then the rule fails, but we'll hope that they come together here. So, step number two, and we'll put it right here. So, step two is to show that the limit of b of n, and again, I'll just use n is equal to infinity here. So, that's going to be, this time, it would be a positive 1 over x. I want to find the limit of this thing as x approaches infinity. Now again, using the same argument, as x goes to infinity, this entire term would go to 0. So it is also going to be 0. 
and <clears throat> that's going to be the limit of b sub n as n approaches infinity. So going back to the definition, that gets you to these two parts. You've now showed that the limit of a sub n is approaching zero. You showed that the limit of b sub n is approaching zero. Uh, and since your function is trapped in between these two functions, then the limit of your function must also be zero. So the final step is just to show, since the limit of this one was zero and the limit of this one was zero, then you've shown that the limit um, of c sub n as n approaches infinity must also be zero. And what this means then is that the series converges to zero. So again, if you want to show that this sequence converges, find a sequence that stays above it, find a sequence that stays below it, uh, then using this definition, show that the limit of the lower sequence is L, the limit of the upper sequence is L, and therefore the overall limit would be L. And let's try one more example. Okay, now in this one, what you've got is 3 plus or minus, and you've got a minus 1 that's oscillating between negative 1 and positive 1. So if we want to start again, I'll start with a numerator, kind of like I did before on this one. But I'll go ahead and I'll write, I've got a 3 plus a negative 1, and again, the whole thing will put it to the x power, and that's going to be the numerator. Now what this does is, as you go back and forth between minus 1 and 1, it can only change between, it's going to be less than or equal to, if n is to an even power, then this would be a positive 1. You'd have 3 plus 1, it would be 4. So the biggest this thing is ever going to get to is 4. Now, if n is to an odd power, you would have a negative 1, 3 minus 1. Uh, the smallest this thing will ever get to is 2. So the numerator has to bounce back and forth between a 2 and a 4. Now, if we were to plot a few points, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what this thing looks like. So if we were to actually plot it to get a graph of what it would look like and plot them, it actually looks like this. So what this is, these, this is a plot of the sequence. So now again, visually, does it seem to be approaching a fixed number? Well, if you, we'll stick this line in here again. These blue dots seem to be approaching this red line, and again, that's going to be the limit, and it seems like the limit of this thing is zero. So this thing does seem to be converging towards zero, but again, you have to prove that. Okay, again, now this was the numerator, but your function involves an n squared in the denominator. So to change it into your function, we'll put an n, or actually in this case, again, we'll stay consistent with our thing, an x squared. And whatever you do to one part of that, you have to do the same thing to the other part. So an x squared and an x squared. So here is your original uh, sequence, and this would be the upper one, and this would be the lower one. So again, I think we'll go ahead and do kind of like what we did before. This part right here is going to be a sub n, and to stay consistent, we'll stay with the black. This part right here is going to be uh, b sub n. And this one is c sub n. That was your original. So now again, back to the steps, you've got to do three things. You have to show that the limit of the lower sequence is L, then you've got to show that the limit of the upper sequence is L, and if you do that, then the limit of your sequence will also be L. So we'll do the same three steps. So step number one, find the limit as x approaches infinity of this sequence, 2 over x squared. Now that's actually pretty easy to do because as x goes to infinity, then x squared goes to infinity, and you'd have 2 divided by a really large number. This entire thing will go to 0. So that's going to approach 0. And what that is, that is the limit of the A uh, sequence, the lower sequence. So now you've got to figure out this part right here. What about the upper sequence? So step 2. You know, now you need to find the limit of the upper sequence, which is 4 over x squared, as x approaches infinity. And again, using the same argument, if x goes to infinity, then x squared goes to infinity. So you have 4 divided by a really large number. That entire thing would go to 0. So this one will also be 0. And what this is, this is the limit of the upper sequence. So the limit of b sub n. 
as n approaches infinity. <clears throat> Again, back to the definition. You showed <clears throat> that the limit of the lower sequence is 0. You showed that the limit of the upper sequence is 0. Therefore, since they're your sequence stays in between those two sequences, and they both are approaching the same number, then your sequence also has to approach that number. So in step three, you can conclude, in the final step, um, you can conclude that the limit of the C sequence uh, as n approaches infinity, so the limit of your original sequence also approaches zero. And again, what this means is then this sequence converges uh, to zero. So again, one last look at each one. The idea is to, given the original sequence, is find yourself a lower sequence and find yourself an upper sequence that your sequence stays in between. And then uh, show the limit, find the limit of the lower sequence, find the limit of the upper sequence, and if those two limits are the same thing, then your, let me kind of put it down here, your uh, a sub n uh, approaches L, and B sub n approaches L, then your sequence also has to approach L. And it's called the squeeze theorem. Sometimes you hear it called the sandwich theorem. Uh, and it's very similar to what you did a long time ago when you first worked with limits.